So, Blog Actives here in the European Parliament with Sir Stephen Wall. Sir Stephen's the, uh, the former uh, EU advisor to Tony Blair. Can I ask you, um, you were mentioning just off camera a moment ago about your two theories that you're going to be uh, explaining today to the British Chamber of Commerce in Belgium about the UK politics and the EU. Would you expand? Well, the first is that I think that despite changes of rhetoric, the substance of British government policy uh, on the European Union has not really changed very much over the, over the years. In other words, that all British governments have to recognise that British interests can only be pursued via successful membership of the European Union. Uh, some claim to want to do more, as Tony Blair's government did, and in fact did slightly less perhaps than people had hoped. Uh, some, uh, like a, an incoming Conservative government, uh, if there is one, have a rather Eurosceptic uh, rhetoric. But I think if you look at the speech that David Cameron made a few months ago, when he abandoned the idea of a referendum on the Lisbon Treaty, what you can see is a politician who is beginning to think, what do I actually do if I become Prime Minister? The answer is that on most policy issues, uh, there's no progress to be made other than via the European Union. It doesn't mean that the European Union is the total answer, uh, but there isn't an answer that goes around the European Union. And the second point is that actually I think there's less substantive difference of, of, of policy between Britain and our European partners than either Britain or some of our partners would like to acknowledge. In other words, I think on the part of some of our continental partners, sometimes the rhetoric uh, is way out ahead of the political reality in domestic terms in their own country. And that's got, that, that issue has got more so over the last few years. Okay, this is uh, an interesting place, place to start from. Now, um, presuming that we have a, a change of government in the next few months, or actually if we don't, we're going to have a, a change to some level, do you think there's going to be a difference to how business and business policy is, uh, is formulated for the, for the UK? I think that for, for any government, uh, obviously maximising the advantage to British industry, particularly given the predominant position of the city, is a, is, a, is a prime requirement. And again, it's been the policy of successive British governments to want to have an open, liberal trading system. In other words, that we don't have a protectionist uh, European Union. We don't put barriers in the way of, uh, of, uh, of trade. And I think that will, uh, that will continue. The difficult issue for the British government, be it a Labour government or a Conservative government, I think is how much central, centralised European regulation in the financial sector uh, do we agree to. On the one hand, obviously, we do want to preserve the advantages of the City of London. On the other hand, uh, it's clear from the, from the crisis that you can't just uh, rely on unsupervised national regulation. Mm. It's interesting, sir. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Michel Barnier was uh, explaining how he was he had a vision for more regulation of financial services. Do you think that it will be possible for the EU to make this apply to the UK and to the, the City of London? Well, I think the, 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 the trick probably is to find a balance between national supervision but within a European framework. I mean, if you take European competition policy, it's enforced by national competition authorities but within a European framework. Now, obviously, the, the big question is how, how prescriptive is that uh, European uh, framework? But I think that what the crisis showed is that what happens in one country, there is a kind of domino effect on, on all. And I think probably public opinion, uh, even in Britain, uh, would see the sense of a, at least a European framework of, of, of supervision, hopefully with not very draconian uh, powers of enforcement. I think enforcement should be a, a last resort. I think you can do quite a lot by collective pressure if there's agreement among a group of, of, uh, of super expert supervisors. Quite a lot can be done by that route, I think. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Now, you mentioned the general public just a moment ago. Obviously, the uh it goes without saying for the general public in the UK, but possibly less so for us here in Brussels. The general public in Britain isn't particularly um, known to follow EU policy and EU affairs. Is a, a change of, of government, as it you know, ultimately will result with uh, changes at EU, at EU level, would make a difference to the man on the street in Britain? Not in terms of the degree of interest. I think it's one of the interesting things about British public opinion that there is a lot of hostility to uh, the European Union in Britain. And I think that hostility is wide, but I think it's also quite shallow. I mean, it's very interesting that Europe is not really featuring very much in the election campaign so far. I mean, if you look at in the newspapers or on websites for summaries of the party positions, you have to look quite hard to find uh, what they're saying about Europe. Europe traditionally is not an issue that features I wouldn't know it exists, above would number you? nine on people's list of sure. concerns, you know, the health service, the economy, education, all those things in all countries of the European Union feature more highly. I think if you, you, know, if you, if you scratch uh, 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 an Englishman and say, do you like Brussels? They will say, you know, they will bleed a bit and say no, but that doesn't necessarily translate into to the kind of hostility to membership of the European Union that some of the extreme Eurosceptics would, would wish. Do you think the, the avoidance of EU as a, an election campaign issue, as you were just saying, do you think that's um, 
in the hope of, of winning votes or not losing votes? Um, how do you see what's, what's playing out currently? I think, I think for all parties, but particularly for the British Conservative Party, it's such a divisive uh, issue uh, that the least said the better. And I think one of the things that David Cameron sought very hard to do in the speech he made a few months ago was to take it out of the, uh, the front line of conservative uh, politics. I mean, if you take, for example, somebody like Ken Clark, a pro-European member of the front bench, uh, the last thing David Cameron will want is something being said by a prominent Eurosceptic that requires Ken Clark to, uh, to respond, and then immediately you've got the perception of, uh, of divisions. Okay, uh, so Stephen Wall, thank you very much. Thank you.